So now all these methods that we discussed so far can be used to solve the problem of minimizing f of x, an unconstrained minimization problem of one variable where f of x is a differentiable function and then you know we can just take f prime of x, make it equal to zero and use all these root finding techniques in order to compute the stationary point or the point where the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so but the next method that we'll consider will try to solve an optimization problem in one dimension directly. Okay, so we'll consider a very special case. We'll consider a function that we call unimodal. So f of x is unimodal if there exists some point x star such that f of x is decreasing for x which is less than x star and uh, f of x is increasing for x greater than x star. And of course, x star will be the point of minimizer. So it could be a function like this here. In general, it doesn't have to be convex. So maybe let me give you an example where it's not convex. So if I have something like this, for example, let's look at some interval a, b, on which we'll consider this function. And assume that we know that the minimizer is contained at this interval a, b. So this is our x star, and we need to find x star. The function f may not be even given explicitly. You just know that this is a unimodal function, and you know that the minimizer is within this interval. Also, whenever you have a point within the interval a, b, there is a way for you to compute f of x. So it could be done in what we call the black box fashion. So let's say, assume you have some black box, you feed the point x to that black box and uh, it outputs f of x for your given x. Now, how do we find this minimizer? And uh, how do we do it with a relatively small number of attempts for f of x? We want to test as few points as possible with respect to computing the value of f at these points. And we want to locate our minimizer with any given precision. All right. So let's see if something like bisection method will work. So if I take, let's say, the midpoint of this interval, right? So I will obtain the value of f of c, where c is this midpoint, let's say. So is there a way for me to figure out which subinterval my minimizer will belong to, given the value of this f of c? Probably not, right? So how about if we try two points? So let me rename these endpoints into a0, b0. So this is what we start with, the initial interval. And then we'll try two points, maybe a1 here and uh, b1 here. So the idea is that a1 is closer to a0 and b1 is closer to b0. And we we'll also try to make sure that the distance between a0 and a1 is the same as the distance between a b0 and b1 here. Okay, so now say we compute f of a1, we compute f of b1, and we see that f of b1 is greater than f of a1. So now, what can we say about where the minimizer is located in this case? If we assume that it is located to the right from B1, then let's see what happens. So we have f of A1 is less than f of B1, but this means that between A1 and B1, the function is increasing, right? And the function is increasing for x greater than x star. All right, so therefore this is not possible. Okay, so our minimizer must be located somewhere to the left from B1. So therefore it must be located somewhere within the interval A0, B1. So let me show this in green. Okay, so this is our new interval of uncertainty. So we see that if we use two points, then we can use one of these two points to define the new interval of uncertainty. Okay, 
So on the other hand, let's say if f of a1 was greater than f of b1, then what would happen? So it would mean that the function is decreasing between a1 and b1, which means that the root is somewhere to the right from a1. So And we would have the new interval of uncertainty would be given by a1, b0. In our example, f of b1 is greater than f of a1. So now the new interval of uncertainty is a0, b1. So therefore, we'll rename a0 into a1. And we'll proceed with this interval now. Okay, so and next we'll proceed to selecting two new points. Because we want to be efficient, we want to try to reuse one of the points. You see this point A1 is already within this interval, and we already know the value of f for this point. So let's say if computing f at any given point was very difficult, so let's say this black box could be some simulation that runs for several hours before you get the value of f, then in this case, it is extremely important to use as little function evaluations as possible. Therefore, we want to reuse A1, so we want to reuse it, and uh, we need to select the second point in addition to A1, okay? So now, one of the things I want to do here, I want to keep reusing this one of the points, you know, on each next interval. So let's say I selected this point now, right? And uh, you see this point is now closer to B1 than it is to A1. So I will rename this point into B2. All right, so and I'll select another point we shall call A2. And I want the distance between A1 and A2, again, to be the same as the distance between B1 and B2 here. All right. So these two intervals uh, should be equal in length. Moreover, if, let's say, I denote the length of the original interval by L, so B0 minus A0 is L, so this new interval that I obtained here is L1. Now let me introduce some other notations. So let me denote the length of this interval b0, b1, which is the same as the length of a0, a1 by rho l. Then this here will be 1 minus rho l. Okay, so and we assume that this rho is less than 1 half because we agreed that this b1 is closer to b0 than it is to a0. The length of this interval now is 1 minus rho l, so this is the reduction that we get. It will be 1 minus rho, right? So the reduction that we get in the interval of uncertainty. And uh, if I want to keep this reduction the same, the ratio of the length of the new interval to the previous interval, if I want to keep it the same, then I should select these points in the way that a2 is now rho times l1, right? I remember that L1 was actually 1 minus rho L. So now if I look at the point A1, which is the same as B2, so this is the same point as we had after the first iteration, right? All right, so I look at the distance between A1 and A0, because A1 was the original name of this point, right? A1 minus A0 was given by rho times L. Right? So this was the point that was closer to A0 than it is to B0. On the other hand, now, if I consider the length of this interval, when we look at uh, the interval L1, right? Now A1 became B2, right? So this is the point that is closer to B1. And this distance here is given by rho times L1. So therefore, the distance between A0 and A1 and B2 now is the same as B1 minus A2, and it is given by 1 minus rho times L1. And at the same time, L1 by itself was given by 1 minus rho times L. So if I express now in terms of L, it is 1 minus rho squared times L. Okay, so now we have the relation rho L is equal to 1 minus rho squared times L, which is the same as rho is given by 1 minus rho squared 
So we have rho is equal to 1 minus rho squared, right? So this is the same as 1 minus 2 rho plus rho squared minus rho is equal to 0, uh, which is the same as rho squared minus 3 rho plus 1 is 0. And the roots for this equation are given by 3 plus minus square root of 5 over 2. So, but now we also have to keep in mind that our rho was assumed to be less than half. Okay, so and only one of these two roots is less than one half. So rho is given by a 3 minus square root of 5 divided by 2. This is roughly 0 0.382. And this quantity is in fact very closely related to the quantity known as golden ratio. Both actually arise from what the Greeks call the golden section. And let me explain what exactly this means here. We started by looking at uh, this equation. So this is how we found rho. And we can write it as an equivalent equation. Rho divided by 1 minus rho is the same as 1 minus rho divided by 1. Okay, so if you consider an interval of length 1, and um, we consider a section of this interval into two subintervals where, okay, so if I start with 0 here, this is 1, this is rho. Okay, so then the length of this is uh, rho. The length of the other part is 1 minus rho. And what we have here, this equation expresses the smaller subinterval length divided by the larger subinterval length is the same as the larger subinterval length divided by the length of the whole interval. If you find such point on the interval 0, 1, and this is what the ancient Greeks called uh, the golden section. And the golden ratio usually refers to the quantity of 1 minus rho divided by rho. So it's the length of the larger subinterval divided by the length of the smaller one. So we could also write this here as 1 minus rho divided by rho is the same as 1 divided by 1 minus rho. Okay, so this golden ratio is roughly 1, 6, 18. Okay. All right, so, and the method that we obtained is called the golden section search. So this method that we just discussed is the golden section search. This is the name of the method. And to conclude, I just want to mention that the golden ratio is famous and it arises in many different places. In particular, it is often associated with what is perceived as natural beauty. So, for example, the proportions in Parthenon and in other famous architectural landmarks have been observed to have golden ratio involved. And, you know, if you just search for golden ratio online, you can find many interesting facts about this ratio. The ratio between each number in the sequence to the one before it is approximately 1.61803 what the Greeks call the golden ratio. It shows up in the pyramids at Giza and in the Parthenon at Athens and the dimensions of this card. And it's based on a number you can find in a flower. 